What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to another video of tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5. The focus this time around is switching between the screen and the viewfinder. Now as always, there are a couple of disclaimers to be made up front, first of which is while I'm strictly speaking about the EOS R5, as that's the camera I have and I'm testing on, these settings exist in other EOS R cameras, especially the EOS R6. However, since I don't have an EOS R6, I cannot confirm that the actual behaviors are the same. They should be for the most part, but this is especially relevant uh, in this video because like many of my EOS R5 tip videos, I dig into the topic at hand far behind beyond what's just described in the manual. And as a result, I often find anomalous or undescribed or undocumented behaviors that may or may not apply to other cameras because they don't have exactly the same firmwares. So in this instance, there's an undocumented behavior or feature really regarding to regarding the viewfinder and power management found on the R5 running firmware version 1.4. That said, let's get into this. The viewfinder screen selection is primarily controlled through the screen slash viewfinder display setting over on the setup three menu. And in that setting, there are four available options, which are auto one, only screen, auto two, auto switching, viewfinder, and screen. Now both auto one and auto two enable and use the proximity sensor, which is the small window located under the viewfinder, to configure and configure the camera to automatically switch between the viewfinder and the screen when that sensor is triggered. However, the trigger conditions for those two modes are slightly different. When Auto 1 is used, the camera will use the screen, unless the screen is closed, facing towards the user, and the viewfinder proximity sensor is triggered. In that case, the camera will use the viewfinder. Otherwise, the screen is folded out regardless of orientation, up, down, back, forward, doesn't matter, then the proximity sensor is ignored. On the other hand, when Auto 2 is used, the camera will always switch to the viewfinder when the proximity sensor is triggered. So one of the potential problems that you could run into possibly with Auto 2 is that anything that's close enough to the back of the camera will trigger the switch to the viewfinder. So if you're using the camera vlog style, for example, and you have the screen facing forward and you wanna push it back up against a wall to give you a little bit more room or adjust the composition, that will cause it to switch to the viewfinder, or could cause it to switch to the viewfinder. So in short, if you always want the camera to switch to the viewfinder when you put something near this viewfinder, then you wanna use auto two. However, if you only want the camera to switch to the viewfinder when you're probably behind the camera and using it, then you want auto one. The two final options are of course viewfinder and screen, which hopefully are self-obvious. They set this camera to use the viewfinder or the screen respectively all the time. Now, if your intent is to manually switch between the two displays, then you'll probably wanna pick one of these as your starting points. Now, while most users are probably going to use the auto switching most of the time, manual switching is possible even though there isn't a dedicated display switch button on the camera like you find on a lot of its competitors. Now, unfortunately, without a dis dedicated button, you do need to give up one of the programmable buttons on the camera to this task. Now, I did a more in-depth article looking, or video looking at the programming of buttons, and that was tip 31. I'll have a card and a link to that in the description so that you can go check that video out if you want. In any event, you can as assign the screen to viewfinder switch button to any button on the camera that you can program, except for the shutter release and the multi-controller. So pick one that's convenient for you. That said, there's one other thing that will trigger the display switching uh, uh, on the camera, and that's closing the rear LCD screen so that it's pointed towards the camera, so screen in, essentially. And this will force the camera to switch to the viewfinder and basically act as if you told the camera to use the viewfinder only. That brings me to the big thing that I wanted to talk about, because obviously that was pretty easy. The big thing that I wanted to look at and talk about with this whole thing, which is how all of this affects power consumption. And boy, there's a bunch of things to talk about here. Now, if you've ever looked at the power consumption data in the back of the manual, you'll see that shooting with the viewfinder uses considerably more power than the screen does. 
Now, this difference is largely attributed to the higher resolutions and refresh rates the viewfinder runs at. So, uh, in power saving mode, the viewfinder runs at 60 frames a second while the screen runs at 30. In smooth mode, the viewfinder runs at 120 frames a second while the screen runs at 60. And simply put, dealing with that much more data requires more power. However, in the process of looking at power consumption, I ran into several interesting things, including an undocumented feature, and I'm really going to call it a feature because I think it is. Anyway, as expected, there is a difference in power consumption between the screen and the viewfinder. My measurements were in line with the numbers I noted in my revised tip 10 on powering the camera with the USB-C port, with the screen running around 4-ish watts and the viewfinder running on average around, uh, this is for power saving, uh, running around on average about 4.8 or 4.9 watts. Turning both of the displays off using the display off shooting info screen helped a little bit more, but not all that much, a few tenths of a watt at that. In any event, or in either of these modes, the camera was apparently in some kind of shooting a pro or shooting ready mode, kind of the same way it is when the screens are on and it's ready to go, with the pretty much uh, normal power consumption for the camera, so fairly high power consumption. However, when I went to measure the viewfinder power consumption in viewfinder only mode, I ran into, well, let's call it a snag. So I have the viewfinder on my camera set to turn off after three minutes, and eco mode is disabled. I just don't use it. However, when I ran the tests looking at viewfinder power consumption, I noticed that after about 10 seconds, maybe less, the camera's power consumption would drop to 1.8 watts from the normal four or four and a half. Now, this is the same power consumption level I measured when either the uh, camera, when the camera was in basically display off. So either when the display off button was pressed or the display off was triggered by the camera's power saving settings. Moreover, when I looked at the viewfinder from far enough back as to not trigger the proximity sensor, the viewfinder was in fact off. Suffice to say, it appears that Canon is using the viewfinder proximity sensor even when the camera is set to viewfinder only mode to detect if you're looking through it or if there's something behind it and if not, put the camera into a low power mode shortly again after it detects that the viewfinder is not being used. Now, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, this is a good thing, and it's a good thing for two reasons. First, it means the OLED viewfinder is not being used or is only being used as much as it needs to be. Now, this is good as far as I'm concerned because OLEDs degrade with use, especially at high brightness and can suffer from burn-in when displaying fixed content like the shooting information actually is. Now, while I wasn't concerned about the viewfinder on my R5 degrading anytime soon, given you know, essentially how little it really gets used in practice compared to, for example, say a phone, and especially a TV, turning it off when it's as fast as possible when it's not being used should extend the OLED's lifetime even more. Secondly, this whole thing saves power, which obviously is great news if in a mirrorless camera, which is already a power hog to start with, so the more that it can do to not use power, the better it is. The more shots you get, the longer battery life you have, etc. However, this also raises some questions about the battery life testing that was done before the camera was released and the accuracy, therefore, of the published consumption data in the manual. Switching from the viewfinder to the screen saves on the order of a watt or less, and according to Canon, that translates into about twice as many pictures per charge. But entering this low power state saves on the order of two and a half to three watts, which is really significant. Now, that said, the camera doesn't do the same thing when both displays are off, but the rear LCD was turned off using the display info screen instead of, you know, switching to the viewfinder and, and so on and so forth. Now, this exact thing is a bit confusing, so let me see if I can lay this out clearly. When the camera is set to use the viewfinder, so either because you've set it to use the viewfinder in the screen viewfinder menu, 
or the viewfinder has been manually selected using a viewfinder switch button, or the rear LCD is closed and facing the camera, and the proximity sensor is not being triggered, the camera will drop to a low power, hot standby state after about 10 seconds. However, if the camera is set to one of the auto modes or to use the screen, and the screen is turned off using the display off info screen, the camera continues in the shooting standby mode or the higher power mode at the normal four to four and a half to five watt power level. Now, this is unfortunate as that un the display off shooting info screen offers a nice DSLR-like experience with the menus and review being on the screen, but all of the shooting stuff going on through the viewfinder, but it's also clearly costing power that it shouldn't have to. Now, when you hit the display off button, it actually puts the camera into this low power state. What's even more interesting is that I can't find anything about all of, anything about any of this really in the firmware update notes for the camera or in the manual it, and it's not the behavior that the manual describes either. Moreover, this seems to be I think something that was added in a fairly recent firmware version, maybe 1.3 or 1.4, is I don't remember seeing this behavior when I first got the camera, but I could also have missed it too. That said, all things considered, I'd much prefer the camera to do what it's doing now with firmware 1.4 than to keep the OLED viewfinder active for any longer than it actually needs to be. Though I do wish Canon would update the display off info screen to put the camera in the same low power state uh, as the viewfinder is doing now automatically. One final interesting thing I noticed when I was doing all of this and poking around is that while the viewfinder 10 second power off timeout, whatever you want to call it, seems to put the camera in the same low power state as the display off timer or the display off button function, it doesn't seem to trigger the sensor self cleaning cycle that the other two do. At least again, assuming you have the camera set to self cleaning enabled and set to run on power off. So with all that said, let's talk about some recommendations. Even after discovering this new power saving behavior, I'm not sure I'd change my recommendation that most people are likely best served by leaving the camera in auto one. In general, it provides the best balance of power consumption and usability and sane behavior when you're using the screen so you don't have to worry about the screen turning off suddenly when you're shooting vlog style if you're ever doing that and something getting put behind the camera, or if you're using it to shoot, say, a low angle and the camera is close to you, the screen will keep the viewfinder from overriding the setting. Now, all that said, given that the viewfinder powers off very quickly and drops this cam the camera down to that low power display off state, there may be some power savings advantages for setting the camera to use viewfinder only. However, a lot more testing would need to be done to determine just what the savings actually are. And on top of that, the exact savings you'd likely see are going to be heavily dependent on your usage patterns and, for example, how long you actually look through the viewfinder. All that said, I'd really like to see Canon update the firmware so that the display off info screen gets the camera in the same power saving state as the EVF automatically turning off, but it is what it is. So that's display switching on the EOS R5 in a nutshell. I thought this was gonna be a simple one when I dug into it, but it turns out to be, well, a little more than a little more complex than I thought it would be. In any event, if you found this useful or at least informative, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Remember, you can't forget to unsubscribe later if you don't subscribe now. And finally, if you know somebody who might find this useful in, or interesting, please share it with them and spread the word. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.